well, we have a crew here today. Yeah, we brought the <laughs> army. Watch out, folks. You think Alyssa and I get a lot done. They're not too traumatized because they're back from they, war. They came willingly. <laughs> <laughs> we actually really appreciate their help. We yep. really do. It's been nice to visit with people, kind of like see old friends type of thing. So, yep. um, yeah, so today ICF day. It's going to take us a while to get rolling, but we've already kind of talked over uh, what we did, how we did it, some of the things we learned, how it all works, that type of stuff. And now it's time for action. So pretty the, exciting. Yeah, the I think, ICF stuff starting. I think I'm not sure how much visible, well, like visible progress today. I think if we oh, can yeah. get the first or two courses on, that'll be a great day and anything plus that's a bonus do you feel the same way yeah it's a lot of like back and forth we need to get the first two rows stacked then we've got to do membrane and drainage so it's going to be like a bunch of icfs and then kind of backtrack to drainage and then yep. we'll start going on icfs again so yeah visible visible progress will be negligible today but it'll still feel good to get some icfs done oh yeah i'm pretty excited yeah do these pop up pretty nice um, I like these ones are already put together i think we should make a cool pattern out of light form <laughs> So like it looks good, you know, because it's going to be a long time before we have like real sighting. It'd be fun if you had a lot of extra of these to just write messages to space. Send more bacon. So one of the concerns we had was whether or not we placed the rebar efficiently. <laughs> so as not to oh, yeah. the forms. Yeah. Oh, it's on the money. Wow. I think it's on the money. What do you think? I need to turn just a down. hair. So we are going to have to set up. No, not on every corner. Uh, maybe on every corner. Yep, because we put the rebar right in the middle of the corner, which is exactly yeah, where the tie is. It doesn't need to be removed, right? It just needs to be um, cut. Corners, we're actually gonna like flip flop them when we stack them. So we have the short corner here, but the next one we'll flip it upside down so that it's staggered. You're doing the five inch cut? Yes. Or ish. Ish. Five ish. <laughs> Is this a new block or one that we already cut off? Uh, we had to get a new block because the old one we used was like half an inch short. Yep. So we wanted it to be, I know. Yep. We'll save it for up higher though. Um, I think we so ordered really quite well. a few extra blocks That's for this problem. Good. Probably a good idea. <laughs> yep. I think before we get crazy, we need to get that rebar in there because we're going to be banging on this thing when we get that rebar in there. There's no point in trying to get it perfect first. Jesse's the project manager, which gets tough because Jesse's the only one here that really knows what he's doing. Ish. Ish. So More than above average knowledge. Yes. Yeah. So now I'm just checking notes. I feel like with this first course, especially take our time and slow down. Yep. Make sure that we're not, you know, overlooking or forgetting a step here. Yep. So. That's a good one. Um, which means the whole building is going to be that way. So everything's going to be outside of our lines because it's four sided. It's exactly the same. 
So Michelle was like, um, Jesse, the block's not on the line. And I'm like, how's that even possible? Like, it's exactly dead on. The lines are dead on. So after a bit of research, we finally concluded that the blocks are not exactly four feet. They're like three thirty seconds or a sixteenth over four feet. So as you stack, by the time you get to the other end, you're going to be over your line by a little bit. Not much, maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch. <laughs> and there's no way that what 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 controls that is these keys. In order for these blocks to sit on top of each other, they have to be the correct distance. So this is what happened when we tried to stack the wall. So we were having to push the walls out on each side, roughly half an inch, expanding the square that our structure is built on so that all of our keys will fit. And that has to do with the, the block being ever so slightly too long added up over the length of the wall. So we're gonna be attaching all the blocks and then we're gonna be fudging on each side the distance. We'll split the overrun on each side of the wall so that the square remains square, but we can stack block. Ooh. We just stuck the, the level on our forms for the first time. Mm -hmm. And in theory, if we did our work right, it should be level. And yeah. how does it look? Man, I don't know. I'm sure you can get more precise, but it might be a 16th, probably a 32nd. That's pretty good. Not bad, cross a corner. That's a usually a good sign. Working on the buttress on the back side, and we're trying to figure out how the T-block works to understand if we can just bend the rebar around the corner, or if we need to do like cut and bent pieces. So I think I see how it just sits on the form so this is your bottom block, top block. Yeah, so that's gonna have to be cut. And the corners there, trimmed. And then this just sits over those. We're gonna go ahead and mark where our braces have been cut because we've done so many in the corner here. We think we're gonna wanna go back through and add our own bracing, maybe with wire or something, to reduce our chances of a blowout happening. That's pretty it sticky. Like, pretty sticky? So no. you're gonna pull <laughs> the sticky paper off as you go. Yeah, that's, you're gonna try. That's gonna stick to it, yeah. Well. Pause, 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 pause. Pause. Can I do anything to help Michelle? No. No, not just yet. Okay. So it's a new day. Video tanked yesterday. Liz and I were really proud of ourselves. We'd done a tremendous amount of preparation and planning to start the ICFs. And we were really excited for the first row. Everything went pretty good. And then we started putting the second row on and um, we just started running into problems. And we don't even understand whether these are a problem or not. But so I thought I would share just a couple of the um, bottlenecks that we ran into and um, maybe in, uh, kind of share or enlighten a little bit on, you know, things that we didn't anticipate but became a major pain point. So this gap is there because 
These blocks were cut to fit within the chalk lines that Alyssa and I so lovingly spent forever getting perfect. And they fit perfect, everything was great. There's no gap here. Then we went to stack the second row and these keyways did not lock in because this keyway was clear over here. So we either had to move the keyway in one inch to access this one or out one inch to access this one. The reason this became an issue is that these keyways are two inches apart. So these walls have to move in two inch increments. I guess I'll just squash anyone who wants to argue because they're like, you could cut anywhere in here and make the wall fit, you're right. The only way to make that happen would be to make one single cut from top to bottom of the wall and shrink the structure. We're not gonna do that. So what happened was our walls got an inch wider. So all the effort we made to put these chalk lines down and the chalk lines are gone. We decided to average the overage on each side by allowing the building to run a half an inch over on each side. But this happens all the way around because the building is a square. Now our building, instead of being 36 feet 8 inches, is 36 feet 9 inches. And I feel like a complete fool for not checking this information. But it turns out these ICFs are not perfectly four feet. They're four feet in a little bit. So this block is four feet and 330 seconds. Now that 330 seconds doesn't sound like much, but there's nine blocks in a row. You add that up over the course of the building and the building grows by 27, 30 seconds or more. But it started to snowball. This horizontal rebar, according to the drawings, must be two inches from the inside of the wall. Well, that's a problem now because the wall has moved out. So now this horizontal rebar is running into this vertical rebar. So in order to push this wall out, we were having to bend these rebars over. Well, we found that out as a solution and we made it work, but it became a problem around the entire building. So we spent hours bending rebar and trying to move the wall. On top of that, our chalk lines were no longer useful. So instead of being able to simply lay the block and not have to really worry, are the blocks straight or not? Now we had to find a way to make the block straight without the chalk lines. So what we did was run a string around the outside of the walls and use that as a reference from corner to corner to true up the walls. Sure, all of this stuff is doable, but what frustrated us yesterday is we spent all this time doing this instead of building walls. Another challenge we ran into, and this is not an, an issue with the product so much, we had to put rebar on the lower tier of the ICF block. It needed to be eight inches from the footing. It turns out getting rebar into the ICFs below the upper bracing is very difficult. In order to make that feasible, we had to cut the bracing. The good news is because our building is in fact a square, the walls are spot on, one inch too large all the way around. And because we averaged the distance on each side, the building is square. So what we've decided to do is to stop. And we want to just talk this over with our engineer and with the company Lightform just to see like what is it that we're, what are we doing? What's, what's going on here? Why is this happening? Because Alyssa and I have put so much patience and love into making sure that these walls are level and square and true. And we're talking to like the 16th, if not the, the 32nd. And here we've just, boom, we're off by an inch now. And what we don't understand is how that inch is gonna, gonna bite us in the butt as we go up. We feel like it can be accommodated throughout the building, but maybe not. The reason that's an issue is I showed you how quickly that one inch started to snowball on us. Pretty soon the rebars are running into each other and uh, you know other issues started to come up. So that's kind of where we decided to leave it. <clears throat> Today, we're gonna kind of do a half day. We're gonna kind of uh, focus on other things. We have a lot of other tasks that have kind of accumulated on us. Anna's here, she was gonna help us do all the walls, but she's instead gonna be helping me get all these rocks. We've got a lot of big rocks that are stuck in here from when I excavated for the water line. And then we're also gonna check to see if the birdies uh, are all grown up and gone from their nest in the cistern hole. And if they are, great time to get that cistern hole backfilled. So a little bit of a departure from what we were hoping to do, but we're gonna keep moving forward. Uh, tomorrow's Monday morning, so we'll be able to hopefully get the engineer on the phone 
and as well as light form and just kind of work through this problem and find out how big of a problem it is if it's even a major problem at all or if this is just par for the course um, so we'll probably pick this this task back up tomorrow otherwise we'll try to get some other work done just about to start uh, backfilling the cistern hole. I checked to see if the birdies are gone and they are gone. The nest is empty. And then the engineer called, which surprised me, but I was extremely happy because it's a Sunday. The uh, response went something like this. As frustrating as it is where the product is not exact is actually fairly common. Apparently this is also an issue with SIP panels, which are supposed to be four by eight, which is absolutely maddening and requires modification to make them fit on an otherwise precise structure. So the end uh, conversation is that the building being one inch small on the, or one inch large on the foundation will be okay. When we get up to the sill plates, we will correct the uh, size to be exact. Again, I want to share something that my brother taught me. He used to take every board that he would get on a job site and measure them. And he would set aside boards that didn't match. Not every single board, but generally speaking, he would measure every single board. And he taught me, he said, this, these, these pieces of wood are never accurate. Never. They're always different. Even from one end of the board to the other, they're different. So he said, measure everything. Because how can you possibly build something? that's two dimension if all of your materials are inconsistent. This is not like us pointing the finger at light form, not at all. Uh, we do plan on talking to light form just to kind of inform them about our situation and talk to them and see what they think of it. But this is just a reality of materials. I'm glad this is happening to us early because it really drills into my mind that when our doors show up, our uh, underlayment shows up, our eye joists show up, everything that comes onto this construction site must be measured and checked for dimension. Spoiler alert, I just wanted to throw this in this video so there's no misunderstandings. It turns out we did not follow Lightform's instructions. They're pretty doggone clear, but this guy researched far too many different companies who produce ICF and they all do it differently. And as it turns out, our blocks could have easily fit between our chalk lines. We just wanted to straighten that out in case anyone actually is watching this and kind of is confused about why we were stuck on two inch increments. It, the only reason we thought that that should work is because our building is actually in two inch increments, which very few buildings are. So it's an understandable mistake, but we wanted to clear that up. If we would have more carefully read the instructions here, there's going to be a center of wall common seam. So basically you stack your corners where the chalk lines are and then you start stacking block to the middle of the wall. When you reach the point where the blocks don't fit anymore, you sever the blocks, which I actually mentioned earlier in the video and I thought there's no way that's going to work that would weaken the wall. But after talking to Lightform, of course, this is what they instruct you to do. So this was a major oversight on our part and this one small uh, mistake could have saved us a tremendous amount of time and effort. Ridiculous little scenarios like this are one of the reasons that we chose Light for him. We knew they had good customer service, they've been around for a long time, they have a great reputation, and we thought, hmm, we're owner builders, we're probably gonna screw this up. It's, it's really important that we have a company who will not just stand behind their product, but if we get stuck with something really stupid, they'll help us out. And thankfully, one quick phone call to them and got this sorted out, Casey was like, you have a common seam, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, we're good. It turns out we didn't have a common seam. I tried to explain it and Casey's like, I don't think you have a common seam, buddy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no way. So customer service was a huge uh, thing for owner builders and we're thankful that we have that. Okay, now that that's clear, where were we? We do need to make a small adjustment to the buttress because of a slightly deviating line of uh, th uh, number six dowels. We need to have three inches minimum here between the edge of the concrete and this dowel. And otherwise, we're back on track. Next, we're going to be installing the membrane on the back side from the step downs and all the way around. Yesterday, we started installing the membrane and had a bit of struggles. We'd been told that this stuff is stickier than snot and it's difficult to apply. So we learned a lot applying that piece 
and we'll try to apply some of those lessons as we apply it to the back sides here. We've decided that the rest of the day, because we've got the go ahead to start working, but it's again hot today, we're gonna take a little bit of a break, a breather this afternoon and come back and start over. But sounds like from here on out, we got the go ahead to move on the drainage system, get the membrane installed, the drain tile, drain rock, filter fabric. So we'll check back in a little bit later and hopefully get this project moving again. When you ended the video, did you tell them what we were doing? <laughs> no. Ah! If it's this cold in August, there's no hope. Are you doing it? Ah, it's so cold. I really hope you don't have a back spasm. Go under. Oh, oh wow. Wasn't dramatic. <laughs> Woo wow. Don't expect that out of me. That's refreshing. That guy's way bigger than his brother and sisters. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 